Exodus chapter 12. Actually, the Lord began to speak to me last week about this message. I, I knew a little bit because I'm not really watching this thing about the virus to a great extent. I, I knew a little bit about this. And, uh, and, and when the Lord began to lay this message on my heart and he spoke to me uh, as we were approaching today, uh, he said, son, there, there's a, there, there has now become a, a shift a shift, there's a shift, not just in America, but in the world. And you have to back up out of the woods. You got to back up out of the woods as believers. Now, the world is going to be filled with fear. But we as believers are not to be filled with fear. God, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Now, I know, that, I know that there's many in the modern day church, they really don't believe everything this book says. But really, as, as, as a pastor and as, a, as someone who's walked with God since for the last 45 years, I strive with all of my heart to believe everything God's word says. And really, specifically, the New Testament. And we don't have a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. But it, it, as you back up and you look at what's going on right now, who, I, never, I never thought this in my 65 years of living, uh, 64. Well, if you include the time I was conceived, about 65. But I never, I never in my lifetime thought I would see a nation so moved with a spirit of fear as, as, as it is right now. Now, I realize that if it was really something major, I could understand that. Well, Pastor, don't you think it's really major? Well, not when you look at the stats. Not when you really consider the stats. And, and, and I, I've done a little bit of checking, and anybody can check it. But the amount of people that die every year from heart disease in America, listen, or it just, I said America, 647,000 people die a year from heart disease. Listen, from the flu, just the regular flu, 56,000 people a year. From uh, pneumonia, 50,000 people. From sugar diabetes worldwide, every year, 1.6 million people die every year. And from cancer, over 10 million people die every year from cancer. And so far in America, and, and my heart grieves over those people. Uh, last time I checked, there was like 54 to 58 people who died from this virus in America. Now, now wait, you're going to stop down all of society. You're going to shut down everything because there's a virus. And we've had the swine flu. We had the N1. We've had... I mean, all kinds of diseases hit our nation. And, but it's like there's this, this, this wave of fear. And, and now I all, you know, because I, I often thought, how, how could the Antichrist, how is he going to overtake the world? And that's not my message this morning, but it's going to be so easy. Be, because... There, there's whole countries now who have basically declared martial law. There was some governor uh, of some state, a liberal governor, who over her state, because she has a small handful of these cases in her state, she's literally thinking about uh, declaring martial law. Uh, martial law means you lose all your rights. And, and all of a sudden, I, and, and, and really in my heart, when this thing came, really in my heart, be, because we're more than conquerors, where kings were overcomers, I thought, okay, here's going to be the finest hour for the body of Christ, the bride. Amen. The bride is going to rise up, yes. going to take her position. Yes. It's going to be used of God to deliver these people from these afflictions. Now, I'm talking about the Pentecostal full gospel. That's who I'm talking about. Uh, have some more, Janie. God's not done. There you go. You have some too, Linda. Have some, have some, have some. <laughs> that, what is that? That's the spirit of God. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's healing, there's deliverance. Now, I, I'm not a stranger to this stuff. I, I've been walking in this stuff for 45 years. I, I've gone into places that people just, 
I, I couldn't take normal people. And I remember one time I went into the uh, when I went into the Philippines, there was times the military and the government begged me to stay out of areas where the communists, the NPA, were on the rampage. And the Lord said, go get them, boy. I'm with you. I'll protect you. I'll keep you. And I know in one situation we got hit with what they call red eye. Now, in the Philippines, if you ever see, I don't know what they call it in America, but your eyes get like they feel like they're sand in them and they turn red. And, and it can be dangerous. And we got over there and it hit the whole team of people I was with, all, all Filipinos. And, and their, their poor eyes turned so blood red. And they were used to this kind of stuff. It hit me. And, 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 you know, I knew the only way I could overcome this was to rise up in faith, speak to it, command it to go and let go of me. And I did. It didn't happen in one day, but every day. And I mean, it felt like somebody was taking sand and shoving him in my eyes. Now, the guy that was with me, I had to cut my uh, time short in the Philippines for one week, usually three weeks, because he, j- he couldn't handle it. He just couldn't handle it. But I'm telling you, in two days, uh, uh, my eyes cleared up. I'm bragging on J- I'm telling you, my eyes cleared up while everybody else struggled with it. It wasn't because I'm God's special or favorite, but there is a fight of faith. And the church needs to learn how to fight this fight of faith. And fighting the fight of faith, and I'm not picking on you pastors and ministers, you're operating where you're at. I found a long time ago, you, you can't make people, that's like when I, that, that, that man I had with me, big husky guy, wonderful guy, member of my church, I'm not picking on him. I, I didn't try to get him to be where he was not at. That's why I said in my Facebook post, you that have peace in your heart, you come. It's like the Gideon 300, now we're not quite 300, but the Gideon 300. And, and so, but God's got to raise up some, some giant killers in this generation, some people who are not moved by the fear of this world. Yes. They're not moved by what people say or what the government says or what's going to happen. Well, Pastor Mike, what are you going to do if you get hit with it? I'm going to fight it like I did my broken foot. And I slammed it down the fifth time and God healed it. I'm going to fight it like I did the hernia that I went to bed one night and it was gone. I'm going to fight it like I did when I ripped my kneecap off and God healed it. I'm going to fight it like when I broke my index finger and when I woke up the next morning it was gone. I'm going to fight it like I did the colon cancer. It, it took three months, but I went to bed one night it was gone. And the prostate cancer and tumors in my body. I'm going to fight it with the word of God and in the name of Jesus based upon truth. That's how I'm going to fight it. And that's what we're going to do as a church, whether we got many or we got few. What if we wouldn't have showed up this morning, Pastor Mike? I would have just preached just as hard, if not harder. I probably would have had more liberty. (laughs) But I got to have mercy on you. (laughs) See, I I believe that God is ready. He wants to. I I believe with all my heart that right now should be the church's finest hour. Really, and, 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 and us men in the pulpit, I mean, we're supposed to be the ones that are filled with faith, that know how to trust God and believe God. Now, I know there's such a thing as, uh, 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 you know, just people talking big, because I've been around them. I've had people around talking big. Well, uh, that's why I always like this. When I read somebody's book, I just don't want to read their readings. Tell me what God's done. David said, I've killed the lion, I've killed the bear, and I've killed my Goliath. And so I want to see some evidence of it. But I can understand the Baptists closing their doors. I really can. They they don't believe in the miraculous to a great extent anymore. And the Presbyterians and Lutherans and the Catholics. But Pentecostal churches? Pentecostal churches? And and how in the world? Well, I, I just love the people enough to where I want to protect them. Well, Jesus said, bring all the sick, all the lame, all the hot, all the plagued. People with plagues came to Jesus. And I've just got to believe. I was in prayer about this. I, I really, I knew in my heart of hearts that God didn't want me to shut down services. Aren't you going to shut down any services, Pastor Mike, no matter what happens? No, no matter what happens, I'm not shutting them down. And actually, if because of the confession of people's mouth and because they're so full of fear, this thing does explode in America, through the week I'll start having healing services where if it's just me and those people laying hands on them and getting them healed, I'll do it. Because I don't have a spirit of fear. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
You know, I'm not moved by, uh, through the years we've heard a lot of conspiracies and this and that, and, and the boogeyman's going to get you, and I, I'm not afraid of the boogeyman. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus overcame principalities, and I'm not afraid of witches or warlocks. I'm not afraid of the Illuminati or the uh, idiotomy. I'm not afraid of none of them. I'm not, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. I didn't know there was such a thing as the idiotomy. Uh, that's the fake media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not afraid of them. And it's not because I'm somebody, because I'm nobody. I'm nothing, but I know the great I am. I know the great I am. And it's time for the church to rise up and to discover who they are in Christ. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, not in their ability. And, and it's time for people to rise up. And, and you know, you, you can't overcome fear without hiding the word of God in your heart. You, 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 Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yeah. I discovered the truth as a 19-year-old kid that by his stripes I was. You were, I was. I am, I is. <laughs> I is healed. Yeah, but your body says, shut up, body. Come under the authority of the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And uh, so this, this scripture came to me before I, God really began to speak to me. Uh, take a look there in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. <laughs> well, look there, have some more. And verse, look, look there in 25. Yeah. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So God is speaking to us by his word. Say his word. <laughs> Keep doing that, I'll have some wine. Verse 26, whose voice then, listen, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, God's promise, say God's promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, for also, but also the heavens. Why? And this word, yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken. Right now, I could not believe that all of the earth is being shaken by this attack of this particular virus. Come on. The whole earth is being shaken. That we are seeing people must not have built their foundation upon the rock of God's word. Remember Jesus said about a man who built his house upon the sand and another man built his house upon a rock and he said the waves came and the winds came and the river rose up and the house that was built upon the rock, it could not be shaken. Now it doesn't mean that the waves did not do some exterior damage to the house, but it was deeply rooted in a rock. Well, I, I, I want you to realize this, that the people who built their house upon the sand, they were swept away. I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid to tell you this. I don't want to believe it. I really think that a lot of churches, their leadership, have built their house upon sand. Not upon the bedrock of God's word. Yes, amen. I really do. I, I really believe. I, <laughs> I really believe. She's having fun. Don't bother with her. And Tiny, you have some too. Tiny, Tiny, you're involved in it. You don't want to be, but you're right there where the glory's at. <laughs> You're involved in it now, Tiny. You stepped into the river. It's not my fault. You did it. <laughs> See, people don't understand that kind of stuff because they're strangers to the move of the Spirit. <laughs> it's hitting me over here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Got to get my composer back. But the waves... The waves of circumstances. And you know what? It's one thing if a you say, well, they, they said we're not allowed to gather. We have more than 250 people. Oh, no. It's a suggestion. It's not the law. Amen. He, he didn't say you got to do this. And matter of fact, stop and think about this. Walmart has more faith than, I'm sorry to say, than most people in the pulpit today. Because I went to Walmart yesterday and the day before. And they were packed with thousands of people. Thousands at Walmart went, went there. No, I didn't go there to get toilet paper either. <laughs> and I went across the street and we went through the grocery outlet. 
And my, my wife and daughter went there first, and there was a big skid of toilet paper when we went back in the evening to get some cabbages. Friday night, they had skids full of toilet paper, and I, I think they're all believing they're going to have the runs, I think. I don't know. I think that uh, diarrhea, I don't know if that's what they think, you know. I'm not mocking them, but I'm saying I can understand the world. But listen, we're at the food outlet, and it's packed. It's packed, right? So you got Walmart packed. You got uh, the, the grocery stores packed. You got this packed and that packed. And Sunday morning, pastor shut down the church. Now, it's okay if the pastor wants to come to church and say, let all who want to come, come. You're criticizing my pastor. No, I'm saying I can only take you where I'm at spiritually. How can I take you into the fullness of God if I'm moved by the circumstances? <laughs> who, who, could, who, could, who could ever know? Because the name of my message this morning is judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. And, and, and to have joy in that kind of message, you know it's got to be God. <laughs> judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. We got to be the examples to the church. We're, we're not better than anybody else. Uh, you, well, you're just, and I know, I know in my heart, and, and when I put stuff up there, and, 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 and so I, I just kind of thought, well, you know, surely my Pentecostal brothers locally, they're, 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 they're going to stand strong. And I found out most of them aren't. They shut down. But then the ones who are staying open, listen, I couldn't hardly believe it. They're telling, they're telling the sick to stay home. <laughs> They're saying, if you got a fever, stay home. If you don't feel good, stay home. So I put up a post and said, y'all come, y'all come, y'all come. Because <laughs> the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, 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 we want those. And I, I really, I was praying. I said, Lord, what are we looking for? He said, you're looking for the Gideon 300. He, he said, you're looking for the ones who don't have no fear. See, my attitude ever since I've been saved is if I die, I die. Really, that's it. You know, because if I die, oh, heaven's sake, I'll be with Jesus. Oh, ain't that terrible? <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I, I, I love Sister Joan Pierce so much because uh, many years ago, Joan would go to the Philippines. I never went with her, but she went with the same group I went. And she went over there one time, and it was her first journey. And she's just a, 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 a young businesswoman. And she's about, our, well, she's actually older than us, about maybe 10 years. And, and she just went over there, and, and God laid it in her heart to go, go into the leper colony. And, and, and she told Dr. Clifford Rice, the Lord told me to go to the leper colony. Oh, Sister Joan, nobody goes in there. That's the worst re leper colony in the world. I mean, it's so contagious. I don't know if you've ever seen lepers. It, it, it's, it's, it's not nice. And it's terrible. It's a terrible disease, and it is contagious. And, uh, and, and she said, no, no, pa uh, brother. Uh, well, if you can find someone who will go with you. And here there was a, a, another missionary woman who lived over there and said, Joan, I'll go with you into the, into the leper colony. And, and there they go. There they go. And she, they get into the worst part of the leper colony, and she begins to preach and love hits her for these lepers, and she begins to hug them and love on them. No hands, no ears, no legs, just dripping ooze. And she said, all of a sudden, the glory of God came, the Shekinah glory, and she couldn't see nobody in this large gathering of lepers. And, when, and she said, when the fog disappeared, the leprosy was gone. The leper, now... She said she even got reports later that some of the people who had amputated parts that fell off, the parts came back. <laughs> yeah. See, our God is able. 
But everything that can be shaken will be shaken, that only that which is eternal may remain. And the shaking has just begun. Back in 2012, I had fasted for three days before February 18th, preparing for my celebration. That's when I got saved on February 18th, 1975. And, and, and I had a divine visitation in this dream that was more like a, 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 a vision. Uh, I saw, I, I, I saw, I was in the earth, and, 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 and matter of fact, sister, you were in the dream. You were in that dream and other people from the church. And we saw the, 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 the God moving upon the earth supernaturally. And we saw two things. We saw the fear of the Lord coming upon the bride. But we saw the fear of the world, the flesh, and the devil coming upon the sinner. And, 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 and the fear of God is different than the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord causes people to depart from evil. And we embrace the fear of God. But, but the world, they, they were standing out in the streets, I'm not lying to you, literally wetting their pants. They were so full of fear. And I thought, well, in order for that kind of fear to hit the earth, it's going to have to be something really major and drastic. Who would ever think it'd be something like this? No, I mean, think about this, the insanity of it all. Yeah. Something, well, don't you want everybody to get the flu? Well, hello, the flu's been around. Do you know the common cold's been around? You can't believe how many people die from the common cold every year. Well, it's going to spread. Well, um, that's, that's where, as we as God's people, not need to stand up and take authority over it. Now, you, I know you want to take authority over other people's lives, but to be honest with you, in most cases you can't. But you can take authority over it. My, my family has lived basically a healthy life. My family has. My daughter and my, uh, has, has, my Stephanie, she's never even been to a doctor except when she went to get her driver's license. Never, never. She, she never got the shots. My, I, I had to learn my lesson after the first two kids. I gave Michael and Daniel their shots. They got so sick. I had to walk the floor with them. There's vaccinations for they wouldn't die. I didn't know back then that we have the highest rate of crib death in America because of the vaccinations. People don't even know that. Check it up. Crib deaths right after vaccinations. So I took Danny and Michael to get boosters. D Danny was about two years old. I'm waiting in the doctor's office. I pick up a pamphlet. I flip it around. And then they had all the stats of what happens and it says like one out of every thousand is, is going to get uh, 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 this disease one out of every so many are going to get this disease so many and I began to read that and I thought what in the world am I doing so I took my kids I walked them out of there and never took them back and Danny and, 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 and Stephanie never had vaccinations and they've been the healthiest out of all my children the healthiest I mean Stephen sorry Stephen Stephen and Stephanie now, I'm not coming against it. I'm just saying that the, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. And I look back now, and I'm wondering if a lot of my problems, I was in the hospital a lot with lung problems and stuff, was from the vaccinations they gave me. It's all out there. That's not my gospel. I'm just telling you that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. It's going to, it's going to shake, honey. Get ready. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> I said there's a whole lot of shaking going on, and it has just started. Because God promised that before everything is said and done, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, that only that which is eternal may remain. And I tell you, you may not know this, but one of the largest gods in America is the medical world, and it's about to fall off its pedestal. Because the body has been guilty of looking to the world instead of looking to Jesus. And I'm, I'm just, Pastor, don't you know what to leave? Well, okay, 30 people, goodbye. <laughs> what I mean, I'm not hard-hearted. I'm just telling you, it's time to build your faith up. It's time to trust Jesus. It's time to take a hold of what he said. Hey, those stripes on his back were not for nothing. Now, you can't just go out here and say, okay, I'll just quit all that and I'll be good to go. No, you won't. What you got to do is you're going to have to hide the word of God in your heart. Now, I just put out a new meditation book on healing. Nothing but scriptures on healing to hide it in your heart until where when the devil comes knocking at your door and you open it up and there's the devil, you rear back your right fist and you pop him before he knows what's happening. He falls down and you shut the door. Yes, <laughs> Did you get that? Pop the devil in the face. How, how many know what I'm talking? How many you, has the devil ever attacked you in any way and you then lay down like a dumb possum yes. and play dead? Yes. You pop him. Say pop him. Yes. Say it again. Pop him. 
Who do you pop? <laughs> the devil. Not your husband, please. <laughs> not your wife. <laughs> not, not government. You pop the devil. Take authority over him. It is written. It is written. It is written. So we, we got we to gotta get, we, we got to, we, we got to realize everything's going to be shaken. Let me read what it says in 1 Peter 4, verse 16. Listen to this. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Now, I tell you what, I realized before I ever opened my mouth, before I ever put anything on Facebook, because people have always labeled me as some kind of cult, some kind of goofball, some kind of, but that's okay, let them say what they want about me. I just simply believe the word, and it's not here, it's here. I've got proof of it. It's not in my head, it's in my heart. It first began in my head, but it is in my heart. I know God meets my needs. I know by his stripes I'm healed. I know that no weapon formed against me can prosper. I've had people see me two times in consuming gasoline fires and not a hair on my body got burnt. People seen me in the fire and they got burnt outside of the fire. I'm not bragging on Mike Yeager. What does that? The word of God does it. Where? In my heart. Get the word of God in your heart. It, it doesn't come naturally. You got how many have ever had a garden, a natural garden? How many of you had a garden that really produced? Can I see your hands? Come on, come on. Did it take work? Oh, did it take work? You know what? If you're going to have the word of God in your heart, it's going to take work. You're going to have to turn off the world. You're going to have to turn your face away from all the junk the world is telling you. See, as a person thinketh, so is he. Whenever I give heed to what's going on in the world, I feel my faith, my trust, and my confidence in God begin to leak out of me. It just begins to drain me. My joy begins. Yeah, I, I did. I fell for it this week about three days ago. I got, I got to, you know, and I had to deal with, you know, because I deal with so many men up on the hill and back here. And, and I had some conflicts with one of the guys. I'm not to still deal with it. It's a mess. And, and then this happened and that happened. And then this whole thing about, about this virus and shutting everything down. And I, 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 I didn't say nothing, but I went to bed just really feeling like I didn't feel good. <laughs> Mentally, emotionally, I didn't feel good. I was just depression. And, and I'm laying there, and I like to lay in bed, and I take my daily meditations or another book, and I open up my one book about uh, eating the flesh of Jesus and drinking the blood of Jesus, scriptures. And I, I got to, because I worked my way through it all the time. Even though I memorized those scriptures uh, a long time ago, I like to just meditate, meditate, medicate. Say meditate, meditate, medicate. <laughs> Say meditate, meditate, medicate. <laughs> So I'm laying there, and guess what portion I got to? I got to the set of scriptures about peace. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And then I got into the part where joy, that, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. He said, my joy, and I'm laying in bed, and all of a sudden, it's like somebody flipped the switch, and all of a sudden, I'm laying in bed, and holy joy hit me. I said, oh, God, forgive me. <laughs> Here, I lost my joy and I lost my peace because I was eating from the table of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. Eating from the table from the world, the flesh, and the devil. It kind of, my, my daughter has two powerful messages on the Internet where she taught on this subject. And it kind of reminds me of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were taken to the land of Nebuchadnezzar. And they were having, somebody was overseeing them. And they wanted to feed them all the stuff off the king's table. And they said, hey, we can't eat this stuff, man. This stuff is not good for us, man. This, is, this stuff will kill us. And, 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 and it was the best food in the land. And, 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 and they said, you got to eat it. Because the guy said, if you don't, they're going to kill me. He said, listen, just give me 20, I think 21 days. Just get, let us pick what we should eat for 20, 21 days. Say 21 days. I'm telling you, if you would turn off the stupid stuff and even preachers who fill you with fear and, and, and worry and anxiety, oh, the Antichrist is going to get you. Well, what is he going to do with me? He'll cut off your head. Well, I'll see you on the other side. 21 days. And, and, and that's all they did was eat good stuff. And in 21 days, they came and looked at them. Huh? 10 days. Wow. 10 days. Say 10 days. Whoa, ain't that a good deal? 10 days. Just turn it all off. 
and get nothing but the word of God. If all you can do is listen to the audio Bible, New Testament, in 10 days, they came back and looked at them. And you know what? They were healthier than all the other people who have been eating off of the king's table for 10 days. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. The, the body's going to have to wake up, man. We've been eating the wrong stuff. You know what? I'm going to tell you, 99% of the problems I deal with in Christians' lives, it always goes back to their diet. They're eating the wrong stuff. Mentally, emotionally. They said this. They said that. They, uh, what, what does God's word say? Uh, so if we listen to the world, we're going to end up living like the world, aren't we? So let, let's look what it says here. In First Peter chapter four verse sixteen, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him be ashamed. Let him not be ashamed. Now, uh, because I know the stand I'm taking, that I will be persecuted for it. I'm not attacking nobody. I'll be. They'll say I'm a nut. You're an idiot. How dare you endanger your congregation like that? No, wait a minute. What would Jesus do? Of course, they'll brush that aside. Would Jesus cancel meetings because he was afraid of some virus coming? No, he's going to deal with it. Well, you're not Jesus. I know that. But he's in me. He's in you. Yes. Now, we're not going to make nobody come here. Don't you dare grab somebody and drag them here and they're fighting. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Don't want to come. But there's people, I believe, that there's visitors here this morning because their church closed down. I believe that a lot of people are going to begin to come who are just saying, you know what? I want the real McCoy. I want the real word. I want the real truth. And so notice what it goes on here. It says, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come, say the time has come, that judgment must begin in the house of God. See, the very, <laughs> you guys are going to be in trouble. You keep messing with her. For the time, <laughs> you don't understand. You, you, Howard, you all don't understand. That's the glory of God on her. God's trying to do something in her. If she, if she can't get up on her own, she ain't ready to get up. <laughs> The great physician is operating on her, man. <laughs> Let her lay. <laughs> <laughs> Have some more, Jeannie. Have some more. <laughs> For the time has come that judgment must begin in the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that what? Lotus, please read what it says here. They do not obey the gospel. It says if judgment's going to begin with us who obey the gospel, what's going to happen to those who do not obey the gospel? Did you know in 2 Thessalonians it says this, that Christ is coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on two groups of people, them that do not know God and them that do not obey the gospel. <laughs> they don't obey the gospel. People, we've got to obey the gospel. Say, obey the gospel. <laughs> Pastor, don't that bother you? No, I think it's wonderful. I love it when the Holy Ghost moves on somebody's heart. See, God is operating on them. You know, in the old day, remember the old days in the hospitals, they gave people laughing gas. They gave people, did you ever have laughing gas, Sherry? Have some more right now. <laughs> have some right now. Go ahead. Have some. <laughs> There you go. Just have some. <laughs> right back here. Y'all have some right there. Yeah, right there. Right. Yep. Yep. I'm looking at you. Yeah, right there. Yeah, have some. <laughs> have some, Pamela. Pam, go ahead. By all. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm almost gone. <laughs> Victoria, Victoria, you need some. You need some joy, Victoria. You need have some joy, Victoria. <laughs> See, Tiny, you're in trouble. I told you. <laughs> and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the, if the righteous, listen, if the righteous scarcely be saved, say scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Now, how can you laugh at this kind of message? <laughs> listen, if the righteous scarcely be saved, say scarcely. Uh, the other translation says this, uh, the time has come or evidently arrived for God's judgment to begin and it is beginning at our own house. 
And if it starts with us, what is going to what is going to mean to those who refuse to obey the gospel of God? If the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? So so God is coming. Did you know the Bible says that God is a consuming fire? Did you know that? God is a consuming fire, and there's powerful scriptures that talk about what Jesus came to do. And, and, and let me just read that in Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. And it's talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Now get ready for the fire. We had the wine. We had the wine. Now God wants to set the wine on fire. <laughs> we had the wine. Now God wants to set the wine on fire. How many know that wine will burn if it has enough alcoholic contents? I said the wine will burn if it has enough alcoholic contents. <laughs> I said the wine will burn. <laughs> I said the wine. Brother, you're turning red over there. <laughs> that fire is being ignited. The wine will burn. In Malachi 3, 2. But who may abide by the day of his coming? Talking about the coming of Jesus. Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. We are the sons and daughters of Levi. We are priests. He says, and I will purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. In righteousness. See, God wants holiness. God wants righteousness. God wants obedience. God wants faith. God wants trust. God wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. God wants you to partake of his divine nature. God wants you to partake of, of, of all the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Yes. God wants to fill you with himself. The most amazing prayer that Jesus ever prayed was in John chapter 17 where he said, Father, let them be one with us even as we are one that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory that thou gavest me, I have given them. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know. See, the world doesn't know in this generation who Jesus really is. Because the majority of the church doesn't know who Jesus is. Yes, amen. Jesus is the healer. Yes, amen. He's my physician. How about yours? Yes, amen. Jesus is the provider. He does. You, some of you have been here long enough. For 37 years we've been here, and God has always supernaturally provided for us. Supernaturally. Seen money. Uh, three, four years ago, we had a small crowd, a small crowd, Sunday morning during the winter. And I was in my office with my wife Monday morning, and I took that little bit of money, and I put it on the table. Just a little stack of 20s. And I just thank God, my, Lord, my needs are met because I don't beg, I don't plead, I don't press on nobody. I don't connect anybody's healing to giving financially or your blessings. You'll be blessed if you give. I, I do know that because it works for me, but I don't give to get. But because I give, I get. And I, I said, OK, I'm going to take this little pile of 20s and I'm going to count out piles of hundreds. It wouldn't go very far. I figured maybe 300. And I counted out one pile, set it down. I looked and I thought, well, my eyes are messing with me. That pile didn't go down. So I counted out another pile. So, looked like the pile was getting bigger, Howard. <laughs> I counted out another pile. I went, I counted out another pile. And another, I'm not exaggerating. Lars, go to hell. Another pile, another pile, another pile, another pile, another pile. Man, you know, after 15 piles, I'm getting excited, man. I said, whoa, oh, God. I mean, I, I think it's nice that you multiply uh, wine and fish and loaves, but this is really fun, you know. And uh, I think I got too excited because after 22 piles, it stopped. 22 piles. Nobody in that church this morning put $2,200 of $20 bills in there. And, and, and it, it might have been the same year. In the middle of winter, and I come in here and I turn on the heaters and, and, and you could smell garlic in the air, which they put into the LP. And, uh, uh, and, and I said, Lord, we ain't got no money. Our checking account is zero. We're just believing God day by day. 
Lord, you're going to have to do something. I thought, okay, an idea came to me because I turned off the heaters. You could smell the garlic. I mean, it was over with. I've been here all those years. I knew it was done. I, we ain't got no heat. What are we going to do? I didn't have no wood stoves. I didn't have no pellet stoves. That's the only thing I had was LP heater. So I went out back and I had a thousand gallon tank and I lifted up the lid and I looked and it was down below the red mark, zero. I laid my hands on the tank. And I said, okay, God, this is your church. They're your people. I don't think you really want them to be cold. I know you challenge them a little bit with some coldness, but you don't want them to get frostbite in the service. And it was cold. You don't want them to have frostbite. And so I, uh, I, I laid my hand. I said, Lord, either you're going to have to bring the money in, but this morning I need the few. I said, Lord, we need the few. And I put my hands on a tank and I said, now, Lord, I thank you. And I walked away praising God. So what'd you do? I came back here and back that. In them days, I used that LP heater in this one right here, Jesse. And I hanged up that one some years ago. And so I kicked them on and they came on. Boom. I said, whoa. Couldn't smell no garlic. I said, wow. Went into other rooms where I needed heat. Turned them on. They came on. So we went through the whole service, had heat. At the end of their service, I said, were you here for that, Bill? You were here. I said, come on, church, let's go outside. I said, they said, what? I said, just a small handful of us. I said, and we trudged through the snow that year. And I said, look at the tank. Everybody looked at the tank. And I said, look right there. And it was empty. And for the next two and a half months, we would walk out. And we would look at an empty LP tank that God was using to heat our church. Now, if I was a carnal-minded church, I would have just shut the place down and said, well, we ain't got no money to heat church, and I'd send out a desperate letter, and oh, just, we can't even heat the building. Listen, we are in a time right now that if you've ever, ever began to trust and believe God, you better do it now. You better, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit, it's like, a, like the thunder and lightning in my heart. If you ever, because if you wait till you need faith, till you get it, you're in trouble. You better get it now. I got a book back there that talks about how faith comes 28 ways. We better learn how to trust God. And if the pastors can't trust God, we are in a world of hurt. Yes, amen. The carnal minded cannot understand these things because this stuff is spirit and spiritually discerned. Whew. Close your eyes. Whew. I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, son, he said, I am about to impart a gift of faith into my people. He said, I am about to. He said, I imparted it into you the day you got saved. He said, I am about to impart a divine supernatural gift of faith inside of my people. He said, for I will have a standard in these last days. He said, I will have a people who will rise up in my authority and my power and my name, and they will put to flight the enemy. So I want you to reach up and grab that faith by right now. Just grab it. You need it. You may not know it, but you need that faith more than anything. Lord, we take a hold of that faith right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Say this. No plague will come nigh my dwelling. I take authority over this spirit of fear, this virus. And everything connected to it. And I declare. You'll not come nigh my dwelling. You'll not touch my home. Or my family. Or my livelihood. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Now stand to your feet and stomp on the devil. Go ahead. Stop. See the devil under your feet. Stomp on him. Well hear those stomping feet. 